Metal Gear Solid is one of my favorite game franchises of all time. I first started playing the games when I was 8 years old and I've been playing the series for almost 20 years. It would be an understatement to say that this game changed my life. I even wear a symbol of the game on my arm to show my affection and pride in this title. I could go on and on about how this game popularized the stealth genre, how it matured the gaming industry with its story elements, tone and pursuit of mature themes. This video could roll into hours of discussion, analysis and retrospective on what is unquestionably one of the most important video games ever made. But for this video, instead I would like to tell you my story of the game which changed my life. This is my tribute to Metal Gear Solid. The year in game is 2005. Foxhound, an elite branch of the US military and a genetically enhanced special forces unit have taken control of Shadow Moses Island, a remote island of Alaska's Fox Archipelago used as a nuclear weapons disposal facility. Foxhound threatened the use of a nuclear missile if they don't receive $1 billion and the remains of legendary soldier, Big Boss, within 24 hours. We play as Solid Snake, a retired soldier haunted by his past missions against terrorists including Big Boss, his biological father. Our mission is to infiltrate Shadow Moses Island, rescue two hostages, the DARPA chief Donald Anderson and Arms Tech President Kenneth Baker, neutralize Foxhound and if confirmed, prevent the launch of a nuclear missile. Snake is given no equipment to enter the base save for his sneaking suit, a pair of binoculars, the Soliton radar and a smuggled pack of cigarettes. He's outnumbered, outgunned, unarmed and on a time limit. If it was anyone else in the military, it'd be a suicide mission. Luckily enough though, Snake is a master at infiltration. Snake is able to handle himself in close quarters, sneak by unsuspecting guards whilst running, crawl through tight spaces, handle a variety of guns and explosives and survive what would otherwise be fatal gunshots. Plus we have a whole roster of support characters on Snake's personal communication device, the Codec. Several members of varying specialties help us in our mission to stop Foxhound. Colonel Campbell, our senior officer, Naomi Hunter, the medical specialist, Master Miller, the survival expert, mailing our communication support, and a variety of other characters help flesh out our objectives and strategy for success as we play. As we start our mission, we get a basic explanation of our moveset. It's very clunky by today's standards, but when you compare it to contemporary games of the time on the PS1, it's leagues ahead. For the most part, the best way to approach any given scenario is to avoid the enemies entirely, and with the help of our radar, most of the time we can clearly see our opponent's fields of vision, traps and even camera surveillance. Though sometimes we do need to use other gadgets and tools to avoid some nasty laser grids and mines. If needed, we can use various tools to evade both sentries and security cameras, such as electronics jamming chaff grenades and cardboard boxes. But if we do need to resort to force, we can also use a variety of weapons. If you get spotted, however, things escalate quickly. And you'll know when you've been spotted. You must have heard the most terrifying sound in video games by now, right? Yeah, if you hear that noise, you know it's going down. Guards flood into the area and try their best to gun you down. It's very tricky to survive, especially at the start of the game when you have very little gear or rations to keep yourself alive. During alert phases you can no longer use your Soliton radar, and so enemies can easily outflank you, but if you stay hidden for a time, the alert will subside and you can go back to sneaking. Though for the most part the start of the game is very leisurely, with our first objective Donald Anderson being easy enough to find. He tells us that the terrorists do indeed have the capacity to launch a nuke with the help of a new bipedal tank, Metal Gear Rex. Soon after we run into Merrill, a rookie soldier who happens to be Colonel Campbell's niece, and we start to coordinate our efforts to bring down Foxhound, starting by rescuing Baker. Upon finding him on the floor below, we also get to try out our first of Metal Gear Solid's legendary boss fights, starting with... Revolver Ocelot. And let's be honest, I don't think there are more than a handful of other games out there that can match Metal Gear Solid's boss fights. Each one is really unique in the manner in which you have to battle them. In a way there's a puzzle element in the way each enemy works and you have to use specific strategies in order to capitalize on the flaws in your enemy's defenses. Ocelot tends to take ages reloading so you can time your strikes, the tank battle can be made much easier by blowing up its treads, the cyborg ninja can only be attacked by either using your fists or chaff grenades to temporarily stun him, 
boss. I mean, there's always the infamous Psycho Mantis fight, which is probably the most creative boss fight ever created due to the gimmick of plugging your controller into the second port. Now, that's not to say some of these boss fights are really easy. I mean, Sniper Wolf, anyone? Though the cool thing about these fights is that they're paced fairly regularly to help scale the difficulty as you progress, buy new gear, and adapt to new threats. Plus, every time you win a boss fight, your health bar increases, which helps you tackle the tougher and more numerous challenges ahead. Now, I won't go into much more of the story due to its complexity and massive amounts of branching narratives, but I will say it's very well constructed most of the time. But I must admit, replaying the game after so long, this game does have an almost overdramatic approach to some elements of the codec cores and scenarios. I mean, look at this moment, for example. Snake, are you okay? Snake, get out of the way. Stop chatting. Just gonna shoot you again. Though I must also stress the point that this game does still hold up with so many of its memorable set pieces and iconic moments in the story. Every member of Foxhound, maybe save a Vulcan Raven and Decoy Octopus, have a pretty understandable burden which they bear, and it's interesting to beat them in battle only to hear their last words of bitter defeat. Even the genome soldiers get a bit of backstory, which makes them somewhat tragic. Though every now and then you'll also just be riding a lift or finishing a boss fight and one of your companions will blurt out their entire life story, crises and pangs of consciousness, sometimes literally within the first five minutes of meeting them. Come on, get out. We can't stay here forever. Your uniform is different than theirs. Damn! My grandfather was part of the Manhattan Project. I used to think that I could use science to help mankind. And I get the story has a lot to tell in a short amount of time, but sometimes I felt the dialogue felt very rushed. Which brings me on to another contentious point of this title, it's Remake. Metal Gear Solid, The Twin Snakes. Somewhat universally disregarded by die-hard fans of the series, I have to say I'm torn on the game myself. You see, the Twin Snakes allowed players to use abilities in the game stripped from the sequel, Metal Gear Solid 2, Sons of Liberty. It makes certain parts of the game much easier to accomplish, and is seen as the diet version of the Metal Gear Solid experience, but it's also infamous for its over-the-top cutscenes and voice acting. Now I must say, some of the cutscene changes are better than the original, not all of them, not by a stretch, many of them, not even most of them. But some are better. I mean, take a look at some of these, for example. Some are quite good, some are quite bad. Look at this. <laughs> Let me tell you, it's... it's... Forgot. Damn. Oh, that's right. It should be on the back of the package. I mean, even though Metal Gear Solid was a technical marvel for its time, these days it's not aged particularly well, as should be expected, but it's still charming. The updated cutscenes of Twin Snakes often go from fantastic to ridiculous, especially when Snake is concerned. But little moments like the Sniper Wolf Trap show more emotion than the original, as Snake knowingly fires a barrage of useless rounds towards Sniper Wolf in a desperate attempt to do something with the situation. The final battle involving Rex and the Cyborg Ninja is brilliant and fits his character's agile and superhuman traits. There are even little bits of humour and real drama added which the original lacks which just tend to be marred by the other moments of frankly ridiculous stuff. Plus, replaying the original, I had forgotten how much backtracking there is in the game. 
from the moment where in the first Sniper Wolf battle you have to go all the way back to the starting area of the game to find a PSG-1 sniper rifle, to the need to changing the PAL card into various shapes using temperatures and parts of the final area, it gets really tedious. In this regard I liked how Twin Snakes mitigated the PSG-1 problem by adding a tranquilizer variant much closer to the boss fight. Plus even though they changed the voice actor for the Cyborg Ninja from the original, I find both actors do a great job, but a different spin on the character. Whereas the returning cast are very hit and miss with their performances. Overall though I think purists of the game do have a case of nostalgia goggles when it comes to certain elements of the game compared to the Twin Snakes, but I think the original is by no means tired enough to be unplayable for new generations of gamers. Considering its place as an innovator in 3D gaming, its compelling story, gritty subject matter, brilliant pacing, memorable boss fights and encounters, and of course its interesting and lovable characters, I think Metal Gear Solid really stands out from contemporary games that were also popular from the time, because it was so mature, because it was an adult game, it wasn't about a cartoon character like Mario or Zelda. It had real depth to it, real stuff that people in the real world could correlate to current events, it had politics, it had war, it had really heavy subjects. And more than any other game, I think this one really keeps the spirit of its series alive, even today. I think it still keeps the legend of Metal Gear Solid alive, and more importantly, it keeps the legend of Solid Snake alive. <laughs>